Hello and welcome to Guy Logic. My name is Temko and today we are taking a look at a game called HTAL hashtag NYQ the Firefly Diary. And if you're wondering what the hell is going on with this title, it's because it's a stylized renderation of the word Hotaru no Niki, which is the Japanese title of this game. But we're gonna be calling it the Firefly Diary. And uh, in Japan, you, these kind of hashtag shortcuts are very common and a favorite among Japanese people. So they've kind of stuck with that. The game is developed by Nippon Ichi Software originally for the PS Vita and has now come on to the PC on Steam by courtesy of NIS America. So what is the game all about? Well in essence it's a puzzle game and bit of platforming as well in a very stylized graphical style telling a story not through text but merely through interactive media as well as these little pickups you do that sort of tell you the story without any spoken word which is pretty interesting. Now there's a couple of caveats for this because the game came out on Vita and now on PC there are some limitations to what the game can and can do. Graphically because of its stylized look it looks pretty fabulous but technically there's definitely some issues going on here and there. One of the major things you'll notice is that the game runs at 30 FPS. Now the game is very slow paced and you don't really notice it that much but I felt it is still worth a mention because at the end of the day it is dirty and it is locked. The game is a very slow paced game, it doesn't have a lot of moving elements so it's not unplayable as it would be with a racing game or something like that but it is there. Options wise the game has background music volume and sound effects volume. Again there is no spoken dialogue and there is some music which is pretty nice but those are your two sliders. The game does have full mouse and keyboard controls as well as just mouse controls as well as controller controls. So you have quite a few ways to play this game. Now the game doesn't run exactly late on the stream controller which I've tried and I can't speak for any other controller which is one I do not actually have right here. The game though plays fine with mouse and keyboard though the use of a keyboard is pretty much unnecessary as the game is all designed about touch controls which translate quite well to the mouse. Other than that there is Japanese or English language, I'd stick with English. Um, there is no spoken dialogue so you don't really miss out anything of the nuance of a language. But there is a bit of tutorial information when you start a game which you do actually want in English if you do not know Japanese. Full screen on or off, it works fine. And then you have the scaling for pillar box and stretch. Um, yeah, there is what it is. And the resolution which has all the resolution options under the sun. It also has a uh, option mode to remove your save data which I will not do and that is really it. So that's the options menu. There's no actual graphical options at all in the game and that is because it's a 2D stylized very artistic interpretation of a certain style. So it doesn't actually need those because there is no way to deviate from the art style without messing it up. So that is it in terms of technical problems. The game has a few issues here and there. Like I said 30 FPS. I've had a few crash issues with the game and things like that but from a performance standpoint the game runs fine going within its limitations and especially considering it's support from a PS Vita game. Now the game's story is about 10 hours long. I'm gonna show you a little bit of the story. I'll try to minimize what I show to reduce spoilers because a lot of this game is puzzles and puzzle solving and expose to get the story. So I do want to minimize that because it is a pretty cool idea as well as a cool art style but I do need to show you some of the gameplay obviously. Once you've cleared a stage, you can go back to that stage and collect secrets. These secrets are sort of the way to tell the story outside of the expose in the title. And this is done through sort of a isometric view of it. So we're gonna go continue where I left off with my story, uh, show you a bit of gameplay and talk how the game handles its puzzles and all things like that. So let's get into it. Now what I'm showing you right now is stage two. I've skipped stage one. I'm gonna be showing you a little bit of stage two, not all of it, just a tiny bit. The game is controlled by this little girl and there's two of these little fireflies on screen. Green one and a purple one. The green one controls the girl's movements so whenever you point the green one at that is where the girl will walk to. Not that direction, that location. Which is pretty interesting if you're not paying attention to that because you will mess up. Because it will not stop if you let go of the mouse, you will just follow it all the way to that green marker. So you have to make sure you put it where you want it to be and not where you want it to go to in terms of direction. Secondly, you have the little purple one. Purple one is sort of a shadow world. Now we've seen this mechanic in a few other games, but the way they do it in this game is a little bit interesting because you have to go move from shadow to shadow and these shadows have to be connected. Either through terrain, through the girl, or through mobs that are in that position at that time. All these mobs are shadow mobs so to say and they all 
sort of inhibit the shadow realm and they'll eat your shadow which is the basis of the game the girl can only take one hit before dying so this is a pure puzzle platformer and there is no actual combat interaction while there is some running away from monsters and trying to defeat monsters all of this is done through the environment and through puzzle solving and not through actual combat and it's important to note that some of these puzzles are timing based so they're not pure puzzles where you sit back and try combinations some of these puzzles require you to pause the game at a specific time by going into shadow mode which pauses everything some of the games might require you to go back and forth and time certain aspects of it such as crushers you have to time before moving forward bars you have to go over and then you have to time how fast you're moving so you don't fly over too far away stuff like that so these are the three base components of the game and the game has a bunch of puzzles that it tries to increasingly make more complex it starts with simple drop puzzles then it adds a simple timing puzzle then it adds a more complex drop puzzle then it adds these crushers lava pits and so on and so forth and one other thing the game does really well in my opinion is the way it does quick saves now a lot of games have a big problem especially puzzle games but they only quick save at major turns events in a level or if they quick save in a level at all this game does so after every minor puzzle so even if you die right after you'll always be progressing which is very satisfying if you're not very good at puzzle games like myself there is a criticism zone to be leveled at this game in terms of its gameplay and puzzle solving which is that these puzzles are ridiculously simple i've not played through the entire title but even so for my own doing most of these puzzles when i failed them i didn't fail them because i didn't understand them or because I didn't see the solution. I failed them because I mistimed, I failed them because I misclicked, I failed because I didn't look ahead and I died right before finishing because of something I didn't anticipate. I never failed them because the solution wasn't apparent. And if you're really looking for a heavy puzzler, then this might not be the game for you. Because while the game is very interesting in its puzzle and very interesting in the combination of light and dark elements coupled with timings and movements, the puzzles are not particularly complex. So if you are looking for a heavy, complex puzzler, this game is not that. But what this game is though, is extremely atmospheric. The design, sound, and art assets of this title are superb. Now they might not be to everyone's taste, but they are certainly to my taste. Because this is the kind of art style that really brings forth a very specific type of feel. It feels like it's fantasy, but on the other side it feels like it's sci-fi. It has this nice little mix and mesh of archaic elements and mystical elements coupled with this minimalistic animation style for the girl in, in action. It just brings everything so nicely together that it really feels as if this was a world with a story. And it is a world with a story. And every aspect of the world tells that story. Every aspect of the world showcases what is going on with the world, piece by piece, bit by bit. And that is very, very cool. What this game also has is little memory fragments. These are sort of flowers you can pick up and these are hidden throughout every stage. So once you finish a stage, you can go back to a stage and pick up these flowers that explain the story further. None of this is done through speech. None of this is done through voice acting or text or written words. Everything is done through visual expose, which is fantastic. There's not a lot of games that can pull off telling a compelling and interesting story just through expose. I love that. It is not enough of that in gaming where a simple expo a visual expose is all that is required to convey a story. Even a pretty complex story like this one is. But again, that does not forgive the fact that the puzzles are really simple. The only requirement to those puzzles really is knowing the timing, which usually takes one or two tries. And because of the very interesting save mechanic, it doesn't require a lot of backtracking. So yes, the timings are frustrating, but because you don't have to backtrack a lot, they're okay. So you can deal with them quite well. Mechanically, the game isn't very complex. You move the girl using the green little fairy. You go in the shadow realm with the purple fairy. And other than that, there is no jump. There is no run. There is no strafe. There's nothing like that. You can push crates, climb on crates. Certain levers can be switched on and off. And sometimes you can target a mob and trigger a predefined asset to trigger like a bridge or a rock or something else to do its intended path. And that is really where all your interaction ends. So in that case, the game plays less like a puzzler and more like an interactive novel. There's very few things you can do. The things you can do are obviously interesting. And when you mess up, you die, have to redo it. And because the game is designed that way, it feels pretty much like you're experiencing a story and you're sort of helping along the character figure out where she needs to go next for that story. If that's the sort of thing you enjoy, then this is definitely going to be a game you enjoy. 
Now, on the PS Vita, the game had a lot of problems with the control sheet. Thankfully, on the PC, because we have a mouse and keyboard, because we can precisely control things and we are not dependent on the touch controls of the Vita, the control scheme is a lot better, simply by virtue of the medium it's being played on. End result of that though is that because the game is designed for that tiny screen, that a lot of the visual fidelity that you'd expect from a title up on small screen and that looks very detailed and very not so much cluttered but very rich and filled does lose a bit of luster when you bring it over to the PC medium. The main reason for that obviously is because you upscale this tiny tiny screen to a big 20, 24, 26, 32 inch monitor and suddenly the tiny little cogs where your little character was running over in a minimalistic animated style feel a bit empty. Now let's bring my conclusions for this title because it is a short title, it lasts about 10 hours in the story, there is very little replayability outside of unlocking the secrets and unless you like the art style and the story, the puzzles are really simple. My main conclusion on this title is that I do enjoy the game. The story is very interesting, the art style is captivating, the way they do expose is fantastic, but uh, the puzzles are really simple. Uh, even for me, someone who's not really good at puzzles, they are really simple. And I could solve most of them in one or two tries. The control scheme is fine, it works great, as well as the switching between light and dark modes. That also works pretty great. One thing that I don't like so much is the pacing of the title. And that is where the title really falls off for me. I enjoy a game where I can move forward at a relatively high speed. And this game is just so very, very slow. And that's mostly because the character just moves that slowly. And it's a very deliberate design decision by the developers to do this. And obviously this stems from the idea that it will be played in a Vita with your fingers covering the screen and you needing to lift your finger to double check, bring back your finger to confirm a certain action. And you don't want your character to move too fast and miss out on certain triggers. On the PC though, this is not the situation. And the game running at double the speed in terms of character movement would actually, in my opinion, make the game feel a lot better. Instead of just waiting on screen until your character reaches a certain point, you already know she needs to go to in 30 seconds. Which is not that fun. It has very limited replayability in terms of collecting the secrets for the story. You can go back a level and find them out. But it is locked to 30 FPS. The PC performance isn't phenomenal. Not bad, but not phenomenal. If you can get through the slow pace of the game to enjoy the story, it's a pretty cool title. If you can't, I wouldn't bother too much. If you are interested in the title, it's coming over on Steam on May 18th. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, press that like button below. If you didn't enjoy this video, well, there's a dislike button for exactly that. And leave a comment. Tell us what you want us to do better. Tell us what you enjoyed. We want to hear back from all of you. And if you want to see more content like this on the channel, just press that subscribe button below and we will deliver. So until then, I wish you a good day and until next time, right here on Guy Logic.